Welcome back everyone, this is Axum from Fire Ambrose, and today I'm here with one of my favorite Fae tubers of all time, Enemy. Axum, thank you for having me. You don't know how stoked I am to be here. You put out some of the best Fire Emblem content on the site. You make constantly so much different cool things. I'm truly the lucky one here. And honestly, like I'm excited to talk about some Fire Emblem and some Fire Emblem heroes with you. Thank you so much, Enemy. Like I, I really appreciate that. That type of feedback is what truly makes me happy being a content creator. I want you guys to please check out his channel. I'm going to put the link in the description as well. The edits are beautifully done, like masterfully done. And I don't think people give enough credit to YouTubers for editing, and I think that Enemy is top there. So today we're bringing you a video in which we will take units from Fire Emblem Heroes and we will analyze them against their counterparts in the mainline games of Fire Emblem. I think it's going to be super interesting to see how some of these Fire Emblem Heroes units stack up to their main counterparts and how they were brought into the spin-off game. The first unit that we will be talking about is Legendary Micaiah. I'm going to yield the floor to Enemy and his ideas about these units in Fire Emblem Heroes. Alright, so Legendary Micaiah, in my opinion, is just one of the worst design units in the game. I think she's not good at all. And already, infantry mages are very competitive. There's so many of them. And then when you look at her kit, it's so anti-synergistic, at least for how it looks like in, in today's you know state of the game. Only uh, DR on like certain conditions, but then she wants a desperation too from the effect. It's asking so much from the player when she can't really do a lot. And also, there's other units that can simply do what she can do, but more. And then her preference, the Maiden Solace, in my opinion, this is one of the worst preference things in the game because it takes up a whole action. You have to choose between whether you want her to use her assist, which isn't even that good, or attack. And you have a lot of units in the game that you can tell were very thoughtfully made. Like they have a kit that synergizes really well. She has a kit that is not synergistic in the slightest. And so if I had to use her in the end, I put her here with Blair and then the Marth Emblem. In my mind, I see her as really just infantry mage that can sometimes nuke on player phase and potentially like tank something, maybe. She's got a lot of res. I do really like that she has armored and cavalry effectiveness. I really love tempo as a B skill. I liked phantom res because nowadays there's a lot of units with weapons and skills that rely on a res check specifically, like way more than ever before. So I think it's important that she meets a res check. And of course, I gave her Fleeting Echo because her 30% DR, which is weird because her DR on Echo is better than the DR on her Preference B skill, which I just had to throw away. I absolutely do not want to use it. I'm not that big on Legendary Micaiah, but if I had to, this is what I would use for her. I also kind of like that you added in the Fleeting Echo there to allow some sort of semblance of utility on player phase, right? If we're thinking about Arena from that perspective, there is some value to having that. And I do think that this type of sustain build is probably the best utilization of her in the current Fire Emblem Heroes meta. If we think about her in the mainline game, Fire Emblem Radiant Dawn, I actually have a whole video about this. So I'm just gonna go ahead and plug it shamelessly in here that you should go check it out. You have to check it out. She is one of the only units in the Dawn Brigade that can basically one tap and one shot some of the higher threat enemies in the game. She can generate resources in the form of XP through her own actions with her own sacrifice, which is the same kind of gimmick as Maiden Solus. It does cost her HP, but she can either be healed up back, so it does cost an action. It's not the most efficient thing. One of the values of her too is upon her promotion, which doesn't cost anything, she can use staves at base and use physic as well. So she transitions more into a support role as the game progresses instead of keeping that powerhouse mage utility. The enemies start to have a little bit more HP, a little bit more res, and it becomes a little more difficult for her to one-shot stuff, but she can still greatly contribute. I think she's vastly underrated by the community and way better than most people think that she actually is. They, I mean, they give every Micaiah the armored and cavalry effectiveness, right? And they also always give them her assist, which is the Maiden Solace. And so from that aspect, I actually think it's really cool. I love thematic things like that. Uh, it doesn't make it any better in the meta, but from from a, from an idea standpoint, I think it's pretty cool. It's interesting you mentioned that her role actually changes over time in the game, because when you have a unit that almost transitions into something else, I can kind of see why um, you know you 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 consider her like a very very good unit in the main line, and I wish she was that good in Fae. 
And then let's take a look at Summer Ivy, which I guess was her base version until they eventually made her into an attuned unit. But this was our first version of Ivy in the game, an incredibly popular engage unit and one of my own personal faves. It's interesting to me that they love to have the mechanic where the engage units get like extra buffs or effects whenever they're close to their support partner, which is like a very thematic and I think very cool reference to how they work in engage. And from a game design standpoint, I think it's incredibly interesting. From a meta standpoint though, I actually hate it because it's such a big restriction on how you get most of your effects. And then we're at the point in the game where people are getting just like so many effects and they're getting it so easily. And so now I view restrictions like that, while it's thematically cool, it's just not really what I want to have to deal with when you have so many other options that simply don't need to deal with any of those things. And then she gets a little bit of a stat swing, some penalties, but the thing I actually care about the most is the Brave, and that's really what I think makes her a very good like potential option if you want to use her, and if, if Ivy's a favorite, then you're very happy that she comes with that, because I've said this before and I'll say it again, Brave is most definitely the best effect in the game, and just being able to do like another whole set of damage, it really does make a huge difference. In the end, I ended up putting Soaring Echo in her X skill. I think it opens up a lot of build flexibility for her because she's able to not only have that support and then giving her things like Ploy, Stillwater on both the Seal and the A, it really allows her to boost her res, giving her the Marth Emblem to get those Glacies off, and Brash Assault 4, which is like a very, very, I think, situational B skill. But when you want to run it, it can do wonders. Like the damage reflection, which is the, the damage reduction and throwing it back, I think it's incredible with the glazies on the bit. I love this Ivy. I think she's very cool, very fun to play with. She's definitely not one of the best mage flyers. And honestly, they made her a tuned version later, which in my opinion is just better than her seasonal version. Uh, but it doesn't make her any less fun. I think she's a pretty cool unit. I like how they designed her in Faye. The most effective thing about Ivy is probably her teleportation, right? Like mobility is always key in this yeah. game, has always been in this game. Yes, of course, like things start to show up that prevent your mobility a little more, like Gatekeeper or even Valentine Murr, but you could always run past in the B slot too if you wanted to or whatever. So there's like options to circumvent it. I do really like the idea of res stacking on her because like you said, res stacking is becoming more and more important in this game. A lot of thresholds are being met by res. The fact that she has a brave weapon in her attack, the fact that it adds on 15% of either your attack or the enemy's attack is really good too. So you have that true damage kind of slotted in there for the brave attack. Ivy's base ult has been added now, and I have to say it's probably one of the most busted units I've ever seen. And even her weapon that does the follow-up mechanic alter thing. What is your opinion yeah. on that? The complexity creep just goes crazy with that. I definitely see it as a very valuable effect you want to have, and I actually see that effect aging, uh, in my opinion, quite well. Yeah. Going into Engage, though, I recently did a video on what I think are the best units in Fire Emblem for every game. I have to say Ivy would be my second place. I only put her behind Alir because I like Alir's support capabilities, but in reality, Ivy is, in my opinion, the best combat unit in the game, hands down. And Ivy in that game with Lin can basically destroy absolutely everything due to her speed and the abuse of the bonded shield mechanic with Lucina. This is an easy setup. She has flying utility. She will meet the thresholds necessary to be able to double and destroy everything. You don't even need to give her Lin. You could just give her speed taker and that would be more than enough or some form of a speed boost and you can use the other slot for anything else you want to do. You can later on give her Salika to boost her magic or any other emblem. She doesn't need that. She just needs the speed fixing in order to perform her job. Some people will argue the dex fixing too because her hit rates can be a little bit shaky, but that's like a forge away. So it's really, I don't really feel like that's that much of a fix for a unit that can basically one round almost everything in the game. It is insane how powerful it is. Even if you didn't want to do that build, or if you didn't know about it, Ivy's ease of activation is just in her existing. She is a flyer with great stave rank access, and staves in Engage are really, really strong. So just by virtue of being that type of unit in the game, it's a no-brainer. It's that powerful and that strong of a unit in Engage. Even on my casual playthroughs, I could figure out how good she is. She's a flyer, like she sweeps everything that you you possibly throw at her. And she has, in my opinion, one of the coolest animations in the game. 
there's a reason why she's incredibly popular. I think Ivy is really cool. I think it's really cool how they translated her into Faye, especially with the summer version. And finally, we have Felicia, who's one of my favorite units from Fire Emblem Fates. I think she's so cool, she's quirky, but most importantly, she's not good. <laughs> um, in Faye, I know she's a Gen 1 unit, so it's trying to throw shade at Gen 1 units just because she's Gen 1. But I actually think she's an interesting case study on how in a game where you can treat your favorites and make everyone do so well with new skills, I actually think she's one of the few units that you can't salvage, you cannot save her because of the way her stats are allocated. So her attack stat is just not the highest. It's it's really not where you want it to be, especially with how crazy this game is. Her speed stat is not the highest, but actually you know pretty pretty good. So maybe you've got some use case there. And really the only other thing you've got going for her is maybe her res in this game where attack and speed matter the most. Honestly, her PRF weapon just isn't the best. Like, yeah, it's adaptive, but Arcane Void is just so much better. And even with Arcane Void, I don't think she's that good. The sad part is that I really don't think she'll get any better because even if they make a different Arcane and her speed is at a point where it's like pretty good and she might benefit a little bit from that, but not as much as other speedy daggers. I love tempo as a skill, and I think Pledge is like unusually good as a C skill. And of course, trying to give her lethality cut down with the Marth emblem. I think she's a very, very interesting case to prove that you can treat your favorites, you can love them, but sometimes if they're units like Felicia or Bride Sita, sometimes there's just not much you can do about them. I do think there was an interesting use for Felicia also in the first couple of years of the game. Felicia had this unique quality of being a colorless dagger that had ridiculous resistance. Like it was super high at that point in time, which allowed her to be able to be a more specialized mage killer type unit. It also did help that she had adaptive damage on her weapon, Felicia's plate. And there was some niche uses to it. The special acceleration was also pretty cool too. I do think the game has evolved beyond her capabilities, right? A lot of Gen 1 units have been struggling with that. But I do like this build you set up. I think it's cooking. I think investing into her speed, utilizing lethality to put out those big, big damage numbers is really where it's at. Especially when we're utilizing our King Void that can snowball along with sabotage effects and things like that. Even though somebody will come in and be like, oh, but it's not the best you can be. Well, obviously, you know, other units in the game are still going to be much, much better. If I were to invest in a Gen 1 unit and I had it this whole time and I wanted to invest in my favorites, which I always say people should, this is definitely a way that yeah. you could salvage it easily, right? So, Felicia's one of my favorites, and if Felicia's one of your favorites, this is what we can do. In Fire Emblem Fates, Felicia is also a unit that I kind of would put in the middle of the pack, actually a little bit above. Felicia's whole thing is that she's an unconventional Jagan. Early game, you will see Felicia doing a lot of work, and one of the things I like about Felicia in that game, if you pick her because you chose Mayo Corrin, I think the best way to utilize her is actually to lean into more of the roll compression kind of deal. One two range unit that can do pretty good debuffing, but also has healing capabilities. As opposed to what people usually do with Jacob, which is reclass him into a paladin. So because of that, Jacob is usually rated higher than Felicia. And I agree, I think he is better in that regard. But the beauty of Felicia being a healer is that you now have freed up a slot for another unit that is not a healer. Her support builds fast with Corrin. She does have pretty good synergy with him too, conferring pretty nice stats. Her personal, there is that synergy going on the entire game as well. I do like her as a combat unit, but in the early game, and I do think that the best option for her is to relegate her more to a support role. You could basically reclass her into a strategist. As a combat unit, people really like to do the flame shuriken build, which uses magic. And I'll give you this, it is solid, like it is good damage. But I think it's so techy, and there are other options in the game that can also just do more damage without having to do that, that I don't think her excellence is really in combat roles, if that makes sense. I think she's a serviceable unit. I think you could take her to end game, she's gonna be fine. Having staves at high rank is never gonna be a bad thing, and she can definitely get staves at a very high rank to even use Bifrost if you want. So there is always gonna be an argument that, hey, Felicia is a good unit, and I do agree, she's a good unit. I don't think she's the best unit, I don't think she's better than Jacob, but I definitely think she's better than like a bunch of the Teletubbies the game tends to give you. I had a feeling Felicia was supposed to be like a Jagan type. I mean, they give you her so early on, right? Uh, assuming you pick male Corrin. And so I was actually very interested to see 
how well or like how how well she performs in the long run at the end of fates and how she sort of ends up keeping up her if she even does maintain a role in the game when i played fates and i actually liked her quite a bit i used her from the beginning until the very end i never felt that she wasn't meeting the checks or the kills that i needed her to meet she wasn't exceedingly better than anyone else on the team like relative to the amount of performance or investment that uh, i gave her because she was there from the beginning I actually liked her quite a lot, and I would have thought that on a, on a very casual, casual perspective, she was really good. For me, I didn't find any issues with her. I thought that she was someone that you could pick up right in the beginning and keep her until the very end. I think specialization occurs a lot more at the higher difficulties, but it's not like you can't take her the whole way. She does fulfill a unique niche that not many other units can do. So even there, there is value to be had. All right, everyone. So today, that will conclude our episode of Faye vs. Faye. We looked at these three units. I definitely am going to be inviting Enemy back for more of these units in the future. Thank you so much, Enemy, for being here. I really do appreciate it. You are the boss, and thank you for giving your takes on the units. Axum, it was my pleasure to be here. No one cooks better than you when you talk about all this mainline stuff. As someone who didn't know much about mainline Fire Emblem, guys, once you're done watching this video, just, just go on his channel page and check out every single thing there. There's going to be something that you'll absolutely love. Go on Enemy's channel too. Right now, hit that like and subscribe button on his as well. And right here, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. Leave down in your comments below which units you would like to see us cover in the future. Maybe there's another unit in Heroes you really like and you want to know their comparison within their main game. And we can do that as well. I'm open to the suggestions. I'm pretty sure Enemy is as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. You all have a wonderful day. And bye-bye. Care, guys. See you all real soon.